So people, typically, there is a countdown, but my production <laughs> fucking sucks! With that said, nah, it's not true, I love it, Ayo. <laughs> Welcome to the G2 podcast. We should, we, should not, we should have practiced before this. <laughs> I'm Carlos Osalor, and welcome to the G2 Podcast. Today, we have no other than Mrs. Effie de Portre, which is, you know, all of you guys know her by shocks. She's an absolute goddess, you know, in eSports already. I've been with her uh, in eSports since, I don't even know how many years. Uh, since SK Gaming when I was playing there. So this is gonna be a really fun time. We are live from Berlin. Shox, how's it going? Hello, I'm good. What an introduction. You know, it's good. He, he, here's the thing. Like when you get used to like, like do this, um, you know, not live. Yeah. Then you can get away with like cutting and stuff like that. But when you go in, you know, cold, these things can happen. It's kind know? of like you jumping, gotta embrace it. jumping out of a plane. I, feel, I compare it to a live show. How many times have you jumped out of a plane, though? Well, I, never, but <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's kind of the same. But you know what I mean? Don't. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I, I haven't either, but that's like it's in my in my to-do list. Okay. In good. jumping on a plane. Yeah. How do you feel about jumping on a plane? Uh, I'd are, love to try it, actually. Like, yeah. are you the kind of person to like do a lot of crazy stuff like that? Um, uh, as I've gotten older, I think as everyone, you like think more about. You know, like, oh, roller coaster, it could break. But uh, I do, I would definitely <laughs> still like to jump out of a plane. I think it's awesome. I, I, yeah. I agree. But one thing that bothers me a little bit, it's that I don't even, like, we, we travel a lot. Yeah. And, and I don't know why the more I travel, the more, like, I know the plane, like, sounds. Mm -hmm. So when there's something new, like, I just, I just feel like, ooh. That's... Me too, me too. I, I, I don't know that sound. Yeah. Like, I, We're going to go down. It's, it's, it's yeah. so bad. It's so bad. So um, I, I... Uh, I binge read for like a whole night. I felt really bad for some reason. I binge read a lot of stuff about planes and so on, how they're so safe mm -hmm. and things like that. So I now feel slightly better, but I'll be honest, the more I fly, the more I get like paranoid. Scared. Yeah, me too. Uh, I still think, you know, I still have this feeling of, I don't know how you are, but whenever I'm playing, I'm like, well, if it is going to go down, I can't really change it. That's you know? true. Like I... you, it's, it's really no use if I'm just going to start screaming. I'm just trying to think of all the positive things. But yeah. really, the chances of planes going down is really small. It's, it's, it's super slim. You, yeah. you may as well just go down just singing Oh Happy Day with yeah, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> but, but I have to say, if I'm like, I have this, if it's like, and I'm like, I've never heard that sound before. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I don't care about like playing, like doing turbulence, like this. No, turbulence yeah. can apparently not crash a plane or, or something. It's, it's really hard. I mean, it's, it's really hard. Yeah. But anyway, let's talk on more positive things. Anyway, like, <laughs> like I told you, we don't have a pretty fine topic. Yeah. Not in a million years, our head of communication, Karina, ever told me start with planes that crash no, as a topic I, of discussion. That's with probably Abby. on the list of something you should not. That's very true. That's, that's, very, that's very true. But we break the norm, people. You yeah. know, we're always ahead of the curve. <laughs> you know, I, I, I said before, we've been in esports for quite a long time. And I remember the early beginnings. But I want to even go deeper than that. Yeah. Um, and there is a question that I like to make, actually not to every guest, because not everybody likes to be into the deep stuff early on. But this question is so perfect. I heard it in uh, Tim Ferriss' podcast, mm -hmm. and it was unbelievable. And the question is, do you remember like a single moment that sort of defined who you are today or your career? Mm. Cool. Uh... Yeah. I told you, it's just from airplanes to deep stuff. Yeah, it is. Um, I actually think there's a couple very early on. Um, a couple that I remember. One is when, whenever I put the first step into the then EULCS studio. So LCS hadn't started yet. It mm -hmm. was season three. Um, or, well, season one, but 2013. Confusing. You know what I mean. Um, so season one of the LCS, which was season three, which was 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into the room and it was like, I got hired to do ESL, ULCS plus Riot, because they were working together at that point. And I just remember being like, holy shit. You know, I can swear on this podcast. Uh, I should have told you. I if, if you don't swear, I'm going I'm to feel oh, okay. bad because I do swear. <laughs> All right. Uh, and there was a teleprompter. So a teleprompter is like the auto cue is what? Professional broadcasts all used to read of. And I'm at Ariel Horn. And I don't oh. know if you know Ariel Horn. Yep. So Ariel Horn is a, um, well, producer, very high up when it comes to NALCS, World, just everything, League of Legends, esports, broadcasting. And I'd never met him. And, he, and you know, I read the teleprompter for the first time in rehearsal. And he was just like, 
that's terrible. <laughs> it's just like it's it's really hard actually. It's like, incredibly hard. Um, but uh, fr from that moment on, we became really good friends. And he just said, you know, you, you can't, you just have to do what, you know, you just have to do your thing and we'll help you along the way and, and we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, and that was a good like introduction to feedback and into harsh. Sometimes you just got to be told the way it is. And then uh, there's another moment I remember, and you, you probably remember this as well, uh, very early on in the beginning. We were not angels, you know, we were all very young. Oh, come on, don't say that. Yeah, we were yeah, all I angels. mean, no, listen, I we think, were all um, angels. yeah, we were all angels. But, you know, in the beginning, everything was a bit out there. And I was always very concentrated on my work, but I also like to go out and party. And I still have that. But I remember that you grabbed me aside one moment and you said, listen, you know, I really actually don't care about whatever you do, but don't don't take your eye off the prize or something in that. I don't exactly remember, no. uh, but don't take your eye off the prize because this is you know, this could be huge and this could be, you You have, you're very lucky to be in this position. And uh, I've always remembered that. That's so nice. Yeah. That's so, so nice. <laughs> I mean, then I was probably mad at you. I was like, what did we do? You... <laughs> but yeah, That's yeah. So nice. yeah, it's important. I think it's important because I think you also see a lot of young people, they start and you got to go all in, you know, you, you can't just half-ass it. And you can, if, if you're put in the position that you get a chance to do something cool and something big, um, just you gotta go for it and there is this um book called outliers have you read it no which <laughs> at some point it talks about, about planes as well by the way it's like it's a good thing but, <laughs> Great. <laughs> but this book essentially um so it explains that uh, a lot of the things in your life are already predefined in terms of luck so for example i mean the obvious ones like you get born in a developed country right yeah. that's lucky mm. but then like if you get born in like in june you have a likely, like higher uh, likeliness of being an entrepreneur for some reason. Are you were born in June? I was born in June. I mean, me I, too. <laughs> so it's incredible. But yeah. then those that were born in in, in February, I think it was, mm -hmm. had a higher likeliness, a higher chance of uh, playing in a soccer team huh. because for some reason something works out with, within the years that you're like in your in in your year where you play against the people with the same age, you're actually older than them. Yeah. So you're stronger than you're them. You're better. And it, so yeah. you're better than them. Uh -huh. You have more experience. So things like that actually define a lot of things that you don't think about, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what you learn from this book, which is pretty good because of this, is that at the end of the day, you get given a, a hand, right? Yeah. And with that hand, you just play with it the yeah. best you can. And that's actually got stuck with me because it's so true, you know? If a thousand million things wouldn't have happened, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't yeah. even maybe know that League of Legends is a thing. Existed. Uh, well, I mean, I, I very often think about that because um, what I think as you know is I went to school for a really long time, right? I had I went to university for six years, and then I sometimes think, well, if league is one of what I want, to, like what I wanted to do anyway in gaming, it, is that then a waste? Absolutely not, because one, you learn so many things in any studies you do, even if you never use them again. Like you learn so much. Mm -hmm. I learned so much about you know being objective and evidence based analysis and everything and. What do you study? Uh, history. I have a so, master's in history and a master's in journalism. So I learned all that. But it was only at the end of that six years that then I was already kind of old, right? I was like 24. And a friend of mine said, hey, there's this online free game called League of Legends. I used to play Unreal Tournament with him. And he was like, download it. And I downloaded it. Then I accidentally, I never watched Twitch before. I turned on Twitch and I saw an IEM, 2000. Uh, 11 maybe or 12 you probably played in it and I was like whoa this is insane like that's so nice and I love gaming so why why don't I just try and write about this or, or do something with that and it's that's one of those things because if I hadn't gone to university for so long the timing would have not worked out because league wouldn't have been a thing it's crazy I know it's crazy and all these things you, you will see them over and over so what got you like it's, it's nice that you say this because then I can I can lead to the next question like ah. When when you started playing League of Legends, yeah. like what came first, the chicken or the egg? In other words, like was it first that you loved the game so much, mm, or yeah. that you literally just applied somewhere? You went to SK Gaming. I don't know how. Yeah, how did yeah, it happen? So I played. So I used to play a lot of Unreal Tournament, and I always used to play since very young. Um, since we had like our first computer, just liked it. I didn't have that many friends, also. Uh, anyway, um, so I played League, and I just loved it, and it was really just for fun. It was with my old Unreal Tournament buddies, with my friends, would just be on Team Speak and having fun. And this and that and then i would uh i actually as a, an aside i'm also very interested in sports so growing up i loved gaming and i loved sports and i loved studying in school so i was playing with the idea that's also why i did journalism to be a football reporter 
Uh, I also love tennis. I love cycling, all that. But whenever but you do follow soccer a lot, like yeah, I love it. I remember it. I'm a bit obsessed. Uh, anyway, um, but after university, you know, you get in that phase of like, oh, you know, working nine to five. Oh, what am I gonna do? And like, oh, being a football reporter, that's that's like. It, it's impossible, whatever. And then when I played a lot and I watched the broadcast, I was like, well, you know, this is also competition. This is also sports, which is why I'm I'm interested in it immediately. So then I was like, all right, I'll just write an application to SK Gaming, to ESVI, to like just a couple of outlets. And I got a chance with you guys and with another outlet. And uh, things went really fast from there, you know? I uh, know, I remember yeah. a couple, of, I, I, I think I watched not, I, kind of recently actually, a video of uh, an interview you made uh, to me in Gamescom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just sitting down outside. With the ugly uh, feather earrings. <laughs> I just remember that. Okay. I, and I, 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 I remember <laughs> it. And we were sitting on the curb. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was so weird. But yeah. It was so nice. It was just yeah. nice. We just didn't care because... The, at the end of the day, at that, at that moment, it was like not that professional. Nobody so. did anything professional. Exactly. So just doing some, just documenting something yeah. was just good enough. Exactly. We and I That's think why SK Gaming website was so good as so well. So good. And um, I think it was also one of the first ones uh, in Europe, at least, that did that, you know, interviews with the pro players yep. at the events. And yes, it wasn't fantastic. I mean, I edited it. So like, it was like, oh, ed, you know, put in this SK Gaming card and like... I don't know, no, no, no editing, no fancy, nothing. But that that didn't matter. That was what people wanted to see, and people loved it. People went to SK Gaming to read about everything. Uh, Alex, that you know, that was really smart of him because it was about every game, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Now, now it doesn't make the cut actually, but because no. now there's so much content yeah. out there that just have to be so good. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I mean, it's a good sign, right? It yeah. just means that things are moving forward. Yeah. But when you look at Kind of that people that was you know following those videos and like those just had pretty high number of views actually yeah, considering yeah. all aspects definitely um do you think that core people like still similar things even though they may have children today oh huh. um i think there's a core there that definitely still has it that evolves like we evolve that just not grew up with it but that spent considerable amounts of time on it and i think a lot of people stop playing but keep watching because for them it's kind of replaced other entertainment uh, and i very often get people who say hey i've been following you for seven years now i watch lcs once every two weeks because i just want to see what, how the teams are doing um but i also think there's just a lot of new people and yep. i noticed that definitely when you know sometimes you, and, and so you get a question you're like oh you know how long have you or you know, how did you get this job or whatever? And then I have to say, okay, well, not of course not everyone knows how long we've been doing this. Yeah. Uh, but it is surprising. It, 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 it makes me younger. angry that... Uh, it doesn't make me angry, actually. I, th I actually laugh every time. But uh, in hindsight, I'm kind of pissed about it because I... <laughs> you are great! <laughs> I will... No, 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 no. But I, I will meet uh, fans that now have children. Yeah. So I feel fucking old, you know? <laughs> you have children. Like, uh, yes, but <laughs> I know, but this just re reminds me, you know, that it's been so long, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these people, when they were fans of mine, they were just studying, you know? They were you just know what made around. me feel old? When? You know, Avali, uh, who now does the interviews in NA, uh, yeah. she's lovely. So Travis did an interview with us and she's like, oh, I looked up to you when I was in high school. And I was like, oh That's my crazy. God. That's crazy. That's like, crazy. Uh, it's like, oh. <laughs> so you had the posters and thank in her, you. In her, in her Just room. Just call me grandma, can you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But that is the truth. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I kind of like that. No, I'm not going to no, lie. It's fine. I, I kind of like that. I know all, all these all this new people that don't know. Uh, who we were yeah. during those times they just came in and maybe it's for the best maybe it's for the best <laughs> you're, you're actually right some of this stuff is um uh, easily forgettable yeah <laughs> so okay. then you went to sk gaming yeah and then was the next move uh, to work together with travis yeah yes so travis um i actually think travis doesn't get enough credit for what he did in the i think he does i mean he's he amazing still, i, I mean, hope so I hope everybody so. loves him well i always see i see a lot of like oh i don't like his interviews or he's so casual all that and that, uh, whatever. whatever opinions styles opinions but um he did so much in the beginning of league just he was he was the na guy who was doing all the interviews and creating so much content when nobody else was yep. he had um the show called state of the league mm -hmm, with travis. i remember it well then and then everything was also was now, amazing that that show was amazing yeah because people could talk about whatever they could now things are more regulated and honestly sometimes that's good i don't think that's all bad uh, but that was it was a kind of like the wild wild west and he reached out to me he had me on a show and 
yeah, it was so cool because it introduced me to the American audience and that gave me then my break when I got to eventually do some events in NA. And I did the Lone Star Clash, I believe, um, in Austin and then an MLG as well, Dallas. Uh, and then IPL. Oh, MLG, that, I remember, yeah. wasn't it that one that I had, I, that I was, I was playing top with SK Gaming? Oh, was it, it that be. one? I, I don't know. It was I, I remember there was an event like MLG that I, I, I rolled up to top lane. I can't, I don't even remember why. Like, it's crazy. it was just Kevin and I were like just fucking around and said, Kevin, you want to go meet? And like, or the other way around. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but I remember we got completely Crushed. demolished. Mm. Uh, I played Irelia top and got wrecked well, was like, I think it, was it was like that one. when CLGEU was doing really well right that was that era yeah I, th I think they actually won no actually TSM won I think oh yeah I think, I think they TSM won Lone Star won. Clash or something and then there was also IPL5 you know the best what now people are always like this is the best league tournament that ever was it was pretty cool it was in the Cosmopolitan in yep. Las Vegas imagine I'm like I'd never traveled outside That's crazy. of That's crazy the first thing you see yeah well for I went to Korea just before that and then I got to go to Las Vegas and I was like whoa i mean it's also kind of a bad idea because in a hotel with gambling and 17 year olds and like drinking it's that's not a good point but it maybe that's what made it great who knows that's a very good point actually. yeah when is gambling allowed in the u.s uh, i mean in vegas at, at what age uh gambling i don't know i guess it's 21 like drinking it has to be 18 yeah. 18 i don't know production i mean make we, the research we it's definitely saw some people doing things that they because i was do. about to say like my, my trip to vegas with 19 years of age i did play yeah like, did you have beer i did have a beer which is not a that's a good point yeah people we only do legal stuff here yeah we're just messing around i mean it's a bit weird when you grow up in europe when things are a bit different yeah it's true like, in, in europe everything is 18. Sometimes I think it's better because you don't like, not that we have to talk about alcohol and all that, but sometimes I think it's better because you kind of get introduced to it. When in America, often you hear the stories of 21, let's get absolutely drunk and like destroy ourselves, which is also not great. Yeah, uh, like, like these uh, 40 year olds that haven't lived enough and then they yeah, just- <laughs> go crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then and it, 16 years driving license, I do, I do kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. Uh, um, I don't have a driver's license. Not yet? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that means you don't need it, that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to look at the positive here. <laughs> just trying to look at the positive. So then you work with Travis and, mm. and um, how did that work out? Like how, how you know? Uh, well, he basically introduced me to a lot of the audience. So uh, when we also, we went to Korea, like one day I didn't have a passport and uh, OGN at that time invited foreign journalists to come to watch the OGN championships. Um, and that was awesome. So I got like a passport. Was the one that CLG you did very well at? Yeah. Well, well, it was before they did really well, and also others. So both CLGs were there. Oh. Um, so they, because that, at that time you were allowed to compete in OGN, uh, in the champ. What was it called again? In just an OGN with other foreign teams, if you could afford it. And since there was no LCS yet. Um, CLG just went there for four months to play in CLG EU. So me and Travis went there. And I remember because we had awesome footage, we went to the Azuba Frost house and stuff. And um, nobody else had that footage. And Travis forgot his camera in a taxi. That was the single worst moment ever. So because we knew oh, nobody no. has seen this, this is going to do great. You know, and of course, we're very stressed about it because we want a lot of views because that's good for us. Um, and we didn't find it back. Uh, well, Korea, we stepped outside of the cab. Oh to go to the hotel God. we didn't find it back um but yeah that's like the the nightmare yeah that was that is awful. a nightmare but i mean good for him he still got a lot of stuff after and he did well um but yeah he just was good in introducing me to a lot of different viewers that hadn't known me and that then eventually caught the eye of uh i guess people at riot and esl so how did that happen well uh it was really kind of i guess lucky um because they knew they were going to do LCS. And I think they were, re they looking at a couple of people, for instance, um, Zoe as well, who now oh, does I Overwatch. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Right. Zoe. So they were looking at a couple of people. And I think um, Zoe had a lot more experience. Um, and I didn't have any experience. And I think maybe what was important there is that they wanted someone that was maybe only league or that was good. But on the other hand, it was a difficult choice because I also had no experience. There were a lot of other candidates that had a lot more experience. Um, but then, yeah, someone took a stand for me, Ariel, uh, among those people, uh, people at ESL, Sven and Tobias, you know them yep. as well. 
they are like, you know, let's give her a chance. And I'm still very thankful to them for to this day, because, you know, if that hadn't happened that, you know, people always ask, do you realize what was going to happen? Of course, you don't realize what's going to happen. Like, the way League exploded over yeah, those it's years. Happened, it happened so fast. Insane. It happened yeah. so, so fast. So looking looking back at the reasons why you think they were interested in working with somebody yeah. like you, what do you think are the attributes that brought their attention? Like, you know, what do you think makes you special? Oh, um, well, I think, first of all, I was self-made. Uh, very much right. I, I just I, I was hands on. I kind of got to the position through working with SK and then just doing it, you know, went to those events. It was really long days. We had nothing, you know, we had the camera that I was given and the and the mic and just did it and put it out there and made the content consistently. I think I, I also in the in the eventual or in the first talks must have noticed that I'm I'm a very responsible person. I'm, you know, I'd been to school. I'm like, I'm never going to be late. That's where, like, I was like an hour uh, early like here. She, she was an hour earlier here. Like, did ever did that ever happen? The Joe? No. Was it anybody that, that early? You're not even that early. I, I'm, I'm, I'm late. I mean, I'm typically yeah, yeah, late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we even got to play next splits. Uh, I'm yeah. Spanish. I can get away with it. Yeah. It's not, yeah, see, the time. Um, <laughs> and I guess, and I hope the she fact... She has to burn me, isn't she? <laughs> it's not a burn. Anyway, I guess also the fact that I just loved League of Legends and I was like obsessed, you know, I was like, I, ah, uh, all those things together, hopefully. But I mean, in the end, all that together didn't even warrant maybe putting me on the show with zero experience, uh, but I'm very happy that they did. And it was awful. Do you, have you ever looked back at like those? Oh my God. Uh, well, I, I mean, you with your scarves and everything and like I would, whatever <laughs> I was wearing and like, oh my God. I, 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 I wouldn't have changed much. And uh, maybe, no. I, I, yeah, some of the scrappy, you know, ESL Cologne uh, studio stuff was, was not good. But uh, for the most part, I think it was, it was pretty nice. I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's really easy to, in hindsight, just look back and say that yeah. could have been better that could have been better but when nobody else was doing it like anywhere close to no. that level like riot this is absolutely clear to me right broke the pattern yeah like nobody did anything at that level before no and 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 you know and the problem with that is that you don't know to which standard you should be held to mm -hmm. because every day that passes the standards that you yourself hold yourself up to right increase yeah increase because then you know somebody else is like like blizzard does a very good job with this then riot does a very good job with this then another one that you know well i, I think it's important to think that right then <sighs> and there it was kind of the only production that did the way they did it you know that like it was a weekly broadcast from a set studio with all these assets yep. and everything and that was very new and i'm not I don't want to take away anything from other because ESL did wonderful tournaments already then, MLG then, but it was kind of a different thing. And then that's what I'm talking about. And then for a couple of years, it was actually all it was all good, you know, because League, you know, League was amazing. The, the competition was always amazing. There were underdog victories, you know, get Moscow five almost won the world or was oh, yeah. set to win the world championship like it, that. It was really a magical time. Uh, it was awesome. I remember Alex with uh, Evelyn made. They were amazing by that time. Yes, they were it was, crazy. It was crazy. When the when the catastrophe in worlds happened with but the, the, and that's how like we think oh it was so wonderful back then no, we had a ten you remember, hour pause yeah, the ten hour pause the famous <laughs> oh remember you remember what happened with the, when I was streaming and then my my stream went off and and I was so pissed did you say frog and DDoS? no but I, ha I had somebody <laughs> that worked for me right I, I say worked for me but it was like maybe I was paying him like hundred euro or yeah. something right but he was helping me out with technical stuff yeah and he was like my IT guy, right? Yeah. And he 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 would told me like this is legit. I, I told you a, th a thousand times that somebody nearby Froggen's house was doing this, and I was like, ah, that must be Froggen because he's a streamer. <laughs> as well. Another Froggen, Froggen, Froggen. And then what happened is that every time there was a pause or that stream went on off, any stream on any game, Froggen it's, been, it's fucking ridiculous. Froggen Ditas, you know. <laughs> so and, during the ten hour pause, people were spamming that. Oh, yeah. and um, do you know that's where Silver Scrapes comes from? Yes, people yes. may not know this, but so so it was the early days of League. Uh, so it was was it the season three World Championship? It must have been. No, or the season two season World two, Championship. It must have been. Uh, so it was Jat and D Man were set to cast a series. Uh, was it CLG EU versus? I want to say WE, a Chinese squad, because I remember that Krefa always said, whenever my family... It must have been WE. Yeah, whenever my family is in attendance, something breaks. So something <laughs> breaks, and we're in LA. We're, I, I say we, I wasn't even, I was just a freelancer. 
but the, the broadcast stops or like the pause happens and it is so warm. Jet and D-Man are outside in the sun for 10 hours and the only music they played or there was was Silver Scrapes. So for 10 hours, it was... I didn't know it was that long for that one. I don't exactly remember how... The, it's kind of blurry. But I, I guess they went to interviews and then they came back and then it was the break screen again and then... I don't know. And it was just... And it's crazy because he was literally in downtown LA. Yeah. It was like... Everyone was boiling. In the Staples, right? Yeah. The sta next to the Staples Center next to Staples, at LA yeah. Life. Yeah. Which is where literally like... Justin Bieber and company. Yeah. I mean, I think Justin Bieber had like a few days before like had a concert. something there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you're in a place like that in a 10 hour pause. Yeah. So you're like renting the venue. So can we get some credit for that? That has gotten much, much better. I mean, there's Not been even, some yeah. awful. I, even after that, I think in Europe, we have a reputation of things were just they broke all the time. But uh, I think it's been really good, actually, the last two, 100%. three years. So, so I, I want to I touch on that, actually. I want to touch on that because it is it is undeniable, and then we can go back if you want, but I really yeah. think it's this right moment. It is undeniable that ULCS, in terms of quality of content and creativity, originality, and overall quality of the shoutcasters and the whole production has gone so like upwards in like, you. <laughs> record time, yeah. right? And you've seen that firsthand. What can you tell us about that? Huh. Um, well, first up, I'm super happy with everything, how it's going this year. And I think we've had some really rough years. And I think it's always difficult because when you're kind of not doing the best you can, you want to speak up about it, but it's no, it doesn't make sense. It's better to speak with actions than with words. You don't want to go in and make excuses for yourself, right? You, you want to be good. And I think a lot of things that we didn't talk about then is that, you know, we moved from, first up, it was ESL plus Riot Studio. So obviously there's always, there'll always be a bit of problems when you're working with two crews together. We know that we moved to Berlin and we had to build everything from scratch. So a lot that was being that you saw on the show was actually being produced from LA yep. from people who had to work from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the EU LCS. Uh, we were building a new studio. We were building a new backstage. We were building a new control room so we could be able to do the show all by ourselves. We were hiring new people. And, and I do understand the sentiment because it always looked like, oh, Riot doesn't care about you or whatever. But um, it was because it was a long project. And, you know, the NALCS studio is in LA. It is on campus where everything is. It is in literally the media capital of the world. It is next to all the resources where everything else happens. So I think it's only natural that that looked a lot crisper and better. Um, but that was kind of difficult for us because we were like, okay, we're trying to do the best we can with what we have. And we know it's not as shiny and as cool, but... And then Joe and D-Man left because we went to Berlin, right? And mm -hmm. it, ugh, it was difficult. And I have to admit that I definitely, and some of us as well, you know, you just get very demotivated after a while. You're just like, I know we can do better. I hope, I just hope people could see it. And this year, at the beginning of the year, it all like the new studio was ready that you could see. You no, know, the analyst desk studio. You guys know that all the player rooms were ready, uh, were all new. It was much more fun to come to the studio. The catering was great, you know? The control room was ready. So, you know, for for the first time in a very long time, everything was there. And there were people who were all ours who were doing the show. And that made such a big difference. And I'm glad that I can talk about it now, but you know how it is. When things are shit, it, you make it more shit by saying, making excuses, you yeah, know, and for say, sure. oh, well, we don't have this and this and this bullshit. You just have to keep going. You have to keep working and you have to believe that it will get recognized at one point. And I think that is what we're experiencing now. And I'm not going to say it's like, we, we definitely worked very, very hard this year as well. We had like a complete, we heard you, you were in my DM saying, guys, you know, these stories, <laughs> these players, it's true, it's true. I am so, I, I remember, I, I'm, I'm so annoying with these things, but I, I mean, the things that I do feel yeah. really attached to this, right? So yeah. when I see something, I just go on Twitter and just send a message to like everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah the group, like me, the fish and Trevor, he's like, guys, yeah. <laughs> I really don't think we're doing enough to promote these players. And, and then we are like frustrated because we're like, we know we agree, but we can't change it I right know. now. Uh, and you know, and now, now it's great because all you know, we have this awesome publishing team that do. We have a lot more people that do everything, and uh, we also like sat together last year in November, and we have like, a couple of producers that know what they're talking about. And we're like, all right, how do we, how do we really hit the things home? And we have made a couple of mistakes. You know, King's Legacy definitely, but you, you, I mean, when it comes to us, I mean, is is that a mistake though? I, 
I don't think so. Because I mean, it, it, it's for, for me, I mean, we were the kings yeah. and the legacy was ours. But we said it too much. Okay, fine. But it's just the nature of the yeah. business. When you win four times in a row, mm -hmm. like, there's no and room fanatic, not to say it. And when all of a sudden this versus G2, like, it, it, it's huge. But I but guess I, the way we could have approached it, we talked about it too much, but it's, you know, we have these statistics about viewer retention is not yeah. that long. People don't watch for five hours, most people, right? Mm -hmm. Most people watch for, I guess, 30 to 40 minutes. So we were like, okay, if we say King's Legacy, for the example, I'm sorry to trigger everyone. Like once at the beginning of the show, we have to say it again in the middle of the show and at the end of the show and sometimes in between, because if this is what we're trying to push Correct. the narrative, then we have to say it more. But then there are people who do watch everything, who are on Reddit and on Twitter, yep. and they are, of and course, like, really oh pissed. my effing God, can you stop? <laughs> you know, production, <sighs> you know what you got to do? Because this thing is going to Spotify and it's going to iTunes, it's going to SoundCloud, it's going to YouTube. You know what we have to do? We have to edit this and just... <laughs> Kings, say like kings and legacy like 20 yeah. times in a row just to piss people off yeah. let's do that yeah i mean for riot for riot thank you so much we don't need more help <laughs> i mean the community can be a fickle beast okay but, yeah, you know they because like, it sucks because then i think it was medic because medic was the guy who like when it really got on those people's nerves was the guy who was casting so he still gets so many angry things and i wish sometimes people could see things more in perspective uh, and that is the nature of the internet it, you can't give all the background the all the time. It's the fastest way to provide feedback and in the most yes. anonymous manner. And, so yes. it just it just complicates everything. It complicates everything. And there's a story behind everything and we won't make those same mistakes. But I think, you know, like you say, we've done a better job at telling our stories than we ever have. So And arguably it is better working. than even North America. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to compare. No. And I know you will never compare. No. But in my humble opinion, I think that we adapted in a much faster rate mm. to what the people need and want from this broadcast than what happened in North it's America, which is different. a good thing. Well, it's different, right? Because I think it's hard to compare because it's different. We are rooted in European sports, I think also broadcasting more where things are, there's pundits, you know, and match of the day, and there's uh, a bit more quips and fast to humor and laughs and in our case, then memes and in America, um, although those things are also there, it's kind of a different style of sleek, slick bro broadcasting, mm -hmm. ESPN style, all of that, mm -hmm. which works for that audience. But we consciously grew differently. And this is why it was always so frustrating to be like, okay, and EU is so much worse than NA because of these things and that style when... I mean, back in the day, yeah. I will agree with them. It was overall much better. Yeah. Yeah. much better but i will say it's definitely not the case and oh. i will even see europe ahead but not talk, you know talking about this point exactly because yeah. there is something that kind of uh, annoys me to a very big degree which is i do see this comparison being made between uh, you and dash yeah. so it, i have my i can give you my two cents later about it yeah but please provide me your thoughts well um i think one of the things is that I'm not a professionally trained camera person and Dash is a trained actor and is also like insane at that. He just, he has so much natural charisma, it is insane. And um, he has a very serious style of hosting, I think very to the point, very, um, you know. One-liners, boom, Yeah, one-liners cutting off the analysts when needed, getting them back in line yep. and very like structured and strong, which I really much, uh, I appreciate. And also, um, he's also very close to how you know, the NALCS broadcast likes to do things. So obviously they can work together and find what works the best. Meanwhile, we're kind of on our island in the EU doing our own thing. And I was kind of figuring out for myself what, how I wanted to approach things. And I'm naturally, I'm very energetic and quite a, a funny, like yep. easygoing person. And I try to incorporate a lot of that into my style. And a couple of years ago, or even last year, people were like, Shox is just so much less professional. And that, that, really hurt me to the to the bottom of my heart because i think you can say that i have a different style and you don't like that style as much as you like dash's style and i think that is completely fair that is fair um you know i don't like the way you wrangle in the analyst or the questions you ask specifically fine but to say that i'm less professional professional you know entails that i i don't take my job seriously or that i don't work as hard as everyone else and i take my craft every bit as serious as anyone else you see on the show. So that I just found really, really insulting. Um, but I also think that it wasn't my best year last year, you know? 
I got very much into my own head and I let all that feedback just bring me down when actually what you have to do is take the good things from it. And this is where I have to credit Trevor uh, a lot. Trevor quick has, shot. yeah, quick shot, stepped up as um, kind of more, you know, a, a boss for us or kind of a coordinator for us. And uh, I just told him all this and we worked together and he said, you know, then this year we're going to do it the way you want to do it and what you want to convey. And I think I also changed and I definitely took my time in the first half of the split in spring and in spring, I focused on only being extremely professional and hard lined. And then now in summer, I feel comfortable doing a bit of both again. So hopefully that's evolving me. And I think that's really important for us and for everyone who's growing in a career, never think never chill and think that like you've done it because it's not because it's been great for two, three years and people love you and love the way you do things that there's not going to be someone else who does it better or does it differently or whatever. And uh, I think definitely I was like, I lost my motivation entirely. And I was like, uh, how, uh, how can I, how can I evolve? How can I change? Well, you always can, you know, you always can step up when you need to. And that's something I learned uh, very recently. And yeah, got to work. I totally agree. And you know, people get bored yeah. of people yeah. like very easily. So unless you, you take the conscious decision of changing, which also means that, you know, evolving, which also means that you will have a lot of critics, uh, it is, you're going to die. Like it's yeah. literally what it is. Like you have to evolve and, and keep uh, reinventing yourself. How do you go with like, oh, I shouldn't ask you questions, but you know, it's no, just please. like people, it's just so weird. It's very hard to explain sometimes how it is. People, you know, always say, don't reply to the haters, you know, oh, I, don't I, care about you know, you know how many favorites I have on Twitter? Yeah. I probably have like thousands <laughs> I do of the favorites. Same. I do the same. And most of those are haters. Yeah. I love them. I, I don't mute the conversation. I don't block the people. I just hit favorite. I hit favorite and then I mute them if it's really bad. But like also when people go like, you know, just don't reply to the haters and like, no offense, but unless you're being exposed to thousands and thousands and thousands of haters every day, sometimes you have to. And I don't think it's a bad thing because it's healthy to sometimes so. read it and go, I'm going to reply. Yeah. I'm going to clap back. Yeah. You know, I'm going to hang this guy or girl out to dry. And that feels good and it's fine, but I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it gets really stressful. Sometimes I, 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 hear I break. You. You know? I, I hear yeah. you. But one thing that in my eyes you did very well is uh, embracing banter sometimes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you get into that mood where it's just destructive, mm -hmm. the best thing you can take, uh, you can do is take it with uh, sarcasm yeah. and irony. And, and I know sarcasm is not like, it's not like the greatest word, but no. you have fun with it. The I, there, there's nothing that makes me feel better than just completely clapping back <laughs> somebody. Like yeah. I, don't even, I don't even think too much. Just. 10, 15 seconds of thinking, I'm like, okay, so this guy is easily clappable. Let's and then, do this. Exactly. Everybody oh, has like a weak God, spot. Oh, God, it feels so oh, good. It's just so good. You just go to their Twitter profile and the guy is there with his face and you're like, oh, man, I found your weakness. There you go. Yeah. And it's just for me so easy to pick up on people that I know for a fact are speaking out of their asses. Yes. So, when you know, when you... Example of good piece of feedback, yeah. um, uh, which may be wrong, right? But yeah. for example, hey, um, I fear... I think that you're asking uh, uh, two uh, sensitive questions after a loss. Yeah. Uh, whatever, right? Well, then you can Thank take you. that feedback and just move on with yeah. your life. But you're a shit. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're a shit, shit your host. <laughs> Except, then you're like, I mean, I, I can take, I mean, I, whatever. Like, yeah. I just, I don't, I can't use that, right? No. So, so there's a world in which, in which you know, answering to that guy, putting that guy or girl in, in his or her place, yeah. it's not a bad thing to do. No, so it's not. I, I take my joy in doing it. It's like, Me too. It's fun. When I do it, it feels so good. It's just, I'm releasing, uh, how do you call that, that that substance? When you go to gym and you release these... Um, uh, pheromones? Hormones? Fer I don't think I release it... pheromones. Do I release <laughs> I pheromones? <don't> <laughs> production? <laughs> yeah. No, I, you release, well, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Pretty sure the chat is talking. I would love to read the chat. Why don't you read the chat, the Joe, and tell us what people say? Endorphins. Endorphins. There Endor you go. Pheromones don't take a voice. Yeah, pheromones like a feminine thing. I don't think I release pheromones. <laughs> who knows? I mean, who knows? Maybe I do. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I do. Um, but this, I love this topic of discussion because there is just no right way of doing things. No. You know? At the end of the day, look at EULCS viewership. Yeah. For the first time in a long time, I see it's tied. Yeah. It's tied. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, I, I was looking at the numbers the other day. It's literally tied. And North America has the long term partnership. Mm -hmm. 
going on in in Europe is not even there yet. I don't know. I have. A, I like. I don't want to jump on the like NA versus you bandwagon. I think we focus very hard on ourselves, right? And I think you understand that I. It's like I don't have. I don't have to do that. Um, people do that enough. Um, but like we, you know, we have some insights and stuff and things and also things that are very palpable. Like last year, we would never get any interaction if we did anything. You know, if we had a great segment that we were so proud of, we would not get any interaction. If there was something funny, if there's whatever. And it's a snowball, you know, because it's like, oh, there's mic checks. So I'm looking at this player oh, and I think it's funny. Amazing. And then there's a bit of content with that player. So now I'm looking at that player. And then the broadcast is making a segment about Attila. Yep. So now I'm paying attention and everything. Yep. You need it all. You need it all. So it's, it's, yeah, it's working. You know what I love? The other day, you guys were giving out uh, awards. Yeah. for like social media stuff and yeah. you gave us an award it was so nice what, what was we, it we did a we, we a bantered we bantered with Fanatic. Yeah, oh meme. yeah the man oh <laughs> we uh, with, with the boats was yeah, it that one no it wasn't no. the boat it oh was the pool like, the pool like reckless was in the pool <laughs> <laughs> so quite funny before that so we we seen that picture and we were always like struggling with you know it's reckless right so I know people are sometimes tired of hearing about Reckless, but Reckless is literally our biggest star. It is. So it benefits us to talk about him, right? So that picture came out, but he deleted it actually from his Instagram. So we had a meeting about it. We were like, okay, we were going to make a meme about it, but we didn't because we want to respect him. Or well, and then and one, second later, give a shit. one second later, I go on you Twitter. Doesn't give a shit. <laughs> and you guys use the pic. I think it's fair game. I mean, Jersey, same thing with you guys. Yeah, people I memed it. it, so it's fair game. Honestly, this is so nice. When, when I see, actually, one of, one of the things that I'm, I feel very proud about yeah. doing is bringing back the banter to Europe, you yeah. know? And it makes me so happy to see Fnatic was always like, me, I don't want to. Like I this, don't want like to. Like this beautiful lady that is just walking like this. I don't want to deal with you, you know? And all of a sudden, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, they're like getting into the banter yeah, with us, yeah, you know? I and like, just returning yeah. us. And the, the other day, they, they went to DreamHack um, uh, Masters with the CSGO team. Yeah. And they created a Swedish uh, edition. <laughs> right, and they said the first, like it was Counter Strike, which is mm. not League of Legends related. No, and and they said hey, we don't create jerseys before qualifying. So here is the Swedish edition, and then you know what happened? They got they bombed out of group phase. Fuck you for that. Uh, <laughs> Karma's great. Karma's great. It's fantastic. Uh, I have know. to say, I uh, I love this. I think that you guys don't get enough credit for and for what I can see from League, because I see all your content, which I think is great. But I don't think you get enough content for uh, enough props for doing what you did because you know you're always fighting against this over i think viewers like g2 had a horrible performance at like msi and worlds and it was bad and people always want to go back to that and then you guys leaned into it you were like the villains with sven and missy who took over europe you made that video and i think you don't get enough credit for everything you've you've done and how you leaned into it you laughed at yourself you know you made it kind of a joke because you knew it was kind of a joke you had to pick up again you make all that funny content um you know the jersey and stuff like that those are all good things and i think you should get a lot of props for that i, um, I, I appreciate it yeah. and at the other day and i connect this with with always always your job because i, yeah. I find it so amusing that it's just having fun right yeah and if, there, if there's one mistake that we did is that not having educated the people that followed us before that moment that we were like that. Yeah. So the problem is that when you expect somebody to be serious, professional and blah, 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 blah. It's different. And all, all of a sudden you get shocked like this shit. They're bad boys. What is this? Yeah. They're just ripping jerseys off so in a video. Good. Right. And, and they didn't expect it. So it's all about managing expectations. Yeah. I think if we would have done a better job at managing their expectations and letting them know with bits, you know, hey, we actually don't care. We actually just like want to have fun. Yeah. This is our life, you know, we want to have fun with it. They would have taken it differently. It's hard for people to sometimes realize that you can be professional and f have fun hundred, at I mean, the we same are. time. We are. You know how much fun we it's have in this sports. office? Yeah. Yeah, is we have so much fun. Oh, 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 there you go. This is a perfect moment. Thank you very the much. There is the said shirt. So this is for you. Awesome. This is actually for you. I have beautiful. to say, I just think it's a beautiful design. Oh, thanks very it's much. Awesome. It's sold out, I think, in most sizes. I saw. Um, so you have so nice. it sold out after? I, mean, I, I knew it would sell out. I actually knew it would sell out. And the, um, the, the, the only difference is how fast. Yeah. Uh, but it took it took 40, 40 hours, approximately. So, oh, okay. Uh, um, I mean, I have to bad. say, I still love that you did this. It's the same, like, you take a risk. Uh, you know, like the CLG jerseys with the American flag, at, like the MSI, they Beautiful. made it to the final. That's, a, that's an example of a bet that pays off. Mm -hmm. But they can't all pay off. 
Yeah. You know, you win some, you lose some, and it's a great jersey. We, we, so. we did some that didn't do. You did some that didn't do that well, but for some reason the the US one because our Rocket League team is yeah. super big in the US, mm -hmm. and our Rocket League jerseys are also something incredible. But anyway, this is for you, by the way. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, we actually will give you another one. Yeah. With your name behind. Oh, awesome! In Madrid, you guys have been. Um, you guys have always given us the most kind of we have we got like one at MSI Europe, Europe jersey, but we can't wear it too much publicly because know, we're showing like, favoritism. Worry. But this is a really nice one. I'll definitely uh, sport that in Madrid. Oh, awesome! And, and uh, you're you're not even allowed. I embrace if you banter. Okay, great. I embrace it. Yeah, I'll be somewhere in the crowd with you know flat. Maybe you'll be on the show. <laughs> maybe I'll be on the show. Maybe we have some plans for you if you're nice, willing. Nice, <laughs> nice. Just in case, if yeah. you if you want to have me. Uh, as the samurai of G2, just know that I go to gym very often. So and I, I are you more buff than Lothar and... now? Or? I think Lothar is more buff than I am. Um, it's unfair. But not, not for too long. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, I go literally six, seven I know, times a you're week. Crazy. So I'm like, I'm like exaggeratingly taking it serious. Yeah. So Lothar, you don't have that much left, buddy. It's coming for you. So take do all the pictures now. All right. Take advantage right now. <laughs> I mean, he's a pro player again. Maybe he doesn't have as much time to train. That's true. Actually, when you're a pro player, I think you have a little bit more time. Mm. Because when you're not playing, you just chill. That's the truth. Yeah. Uh, whereas when you're uh, an entrepreneur or in a business where you have a really relevant position, like in your position, yeah. it must be really hard to really disconnect because yeah. you, everything you do connects to your job. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it's not like you can just lay back in your chair and enjoy just your civil service job forever. No. It's like you really have to perform every single, not even weeks, every single day. Yeah. Be one of the best, if not the best in your job, or you'll get fired. And plus. By yeah. the community. Yeah, exactly. By the community. I mean, imagine if that was true. Um, and um, you also, you can't switch it off because our jobs are on the internet. Yep. So wherever you look and all of our I try to read books, so I have a curfew so that I, two hours before bed if I can, and it's very hard, I break that rule all the time. Uh, I try to not have anything internet related, interactive oh or nothing. God. So I watch, I turn off my, I put my phone on flight mode, I put it away, I put it on charge and I watch a movie and then I read for like two to, like to three read? hours. Um, well, I love Murakami, he's a Japanese, Murakami? he's a Japanese author. Um, he, yeah, it's great stuff. It's like realism with something weird about it but now recently i've gotten into fantasy so i, oh. I never read uh, what are you reading about fantasy uh, so now i'm leaving the wheel of time because i just read oh. the, the way of kings and um sanderson damn it what's it called wait it's the oh no so sanderson is the way of kings and then the name of the wind i read as well oh, wait, i was about to say yeah, yeah, the name name of the wind. Well. i had the audiobook there and and it's just, i love it it's, it's, it's very nice it's very nice but i just get it's good sleep uh, uh too fast uh, when I'm list, uh, starting to listen to it yeah. and with the soothing but voice. But it's supposed to be like that. That's it's good. It's true. It's true. But I, I love fantasy. You know, yeah. I'm such a nerd. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I like to say that, like, okay. Did you, you, did you love production? No. You better. <laughs> I mean, we're the best nerds, I guess. We've made our job out of it. It's so but true. I do think it's important to kind of. I think it's totally fine. I think sometimes people under they say like, oh, you don't read or whatever, or you're not cultural. And they're like, yeah, but you're playing games who, that have tons of text. A lot of people learn, I learn English through playing games and watching TV and stuff. I don't think people should be so elitist about, what? oh, well, I mean, you haven't read uh, whatever. I mean, I know the, the only thing that matters, at least to me and from my experience, is kind of street, st how do you call it? Street smart, like yeah, how street, street smart smarts, you are. Yeah. It's important. Mm -hmm. And kind of having gone through stuff, yeah. experience, right? Experience. And and the, what what I what I learned as a professional player, and be, even before then, if you take games slightly seriously, you actually learn to take defeat as a journey, mm -hmm. because there is no game in which you can win all the time. Yeah. So your brain assimilates defeat as a learning process. If you want to, if you're like that, right? If you take the game serious, yeah. and you get pissed when you lose. But you try to things uh, look for things that, to get better yeah. at, then your brain defaults into problem solving. Actually, mm -hmm. and people completely ignore that. Oh no, I drew a red line with violent games. Come on, man! Like, yeah. you know, I made a tweet the other day that I was so proud about, which is uh, when I kill you in a violent game, right? Mm -hmm. It just means that I'm more accurate, smarter, yeah, or faster than you, or all three, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't mean that I killed you in real life. It's, 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 
No, not at all. Right? And I think people should also just talk more about kind of all the positive stories that gaming have, like influenced in their lives. For me personally, as I said, like I loved to study, which didn't make me a very popular kid because I loved to study. I dressed in like hand-me-down clothes. We didn't have that much money at home, but like I could still, if I wanted to have new clothes or whatever, or fancy clothes, but I didn't care really. I dressed in like boy clothes and I, I went to school and I played video games. And if it wasn't for Unreal Tournament and TeamSpeak and going to LANs, I, I just learned to be so much more social than I was. You know, I was not forced. I liked just talking to these people that I had first talked to online. Uh, we played games, we played in tournaments together, and that then helped me be more sociable at school and in my regular life. And that in the end helped me. So there are so many examples of positive uh, reinforcement in gaming that unfortunately did not get covered as much by the media. It's normal because now yeah. the people that own the media are 135 years old on mm -hmm. average. And that's the thing, right? When yeah. at some point these people will uh, just by the love of I God, mean, will, they will die. And at some point, if the you people see how many people watch esports and watch it just on the internet, it's like that always that debate of like, you know, if you guys, if you're on TV, you're going to have made it. And like for me personally, I'm always like, if you're in TV, I think it will mean that TV has made it because they finally got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way as well. But I just think, you know, the things things how they are being done must maybe also be scary for people that have done this for a long time. And now it's all about, you know, Twitch chat is something unfathomable for people that make television shows, I guess. Right. And I think that kind of interaction also on Twitter and whatnot, that's really that's something. Like, tell me a global channel where you can choose the language and the content. Like, this is just so yeah. incredible. Life, right? Everything mm -hmm. happening in life is so incredible to me uh, that people that didn't grow up with this, I can't even imagine how they feel about any of this. But what I know for certain is that, you know, my two-year-old son, one day will be 14, 15. Yeah. And he will maybe hate gaming because his father and his mother are just, you know, into that so much. <laughs> But uh, he will know it exists, yeah. and all his and her friend and all his friends, female and, and male, um, will know about it. Yeah, and it's just a generational Make thing. Make a choice. There's yeah. like my son, my two-year-old son <clears throat> goes into uh, my, and I said it a few times, but this is incredible. He goes into your phone. I don't know if you have a Samsung or an iPhone, but he will go into your phone anyway. And just look. if you unlock it, he will find the YouTube logo. Like he will just go. La, yeah. right, you know, swipe, swipe right, left. Go. He'll find it, and he will find the 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 key, uh, the, the the kind of uh, button to speak to Siri or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm serious, and he will tell her the avion, like which means plane yep. in French. Or he, yeah. he, he just knows how to get into content uh, with two years old. Yeah, Nathan. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It has to be something in the genes. I don't even know what it is. Well, but... they talk about like. Um... I'm gonna get the scientific words right with like being like natives to kind of the internet age and whatnot and growing up in it as opposed to I think we are actually the same generation that we had we had we didn't have it and then we had it yeah but we were young enough to make the jump yeah. right and I then think everything two, two three years more and it would have been tougher yes exactly and then after it's it's always there and before you never knew it yeah. so that I mean the further you are away from that the harder it becomes to just get used to everything because it is crazy it is going from you can only contact each other with a phone i remember that my grandma's phone like if my friends would call it would be very hard you know to get in touch with people because it's true. And it was just and to everything is at your fingertips all the information in the world anyone you can everything talk to everything happens here it's unbelievable yeah so it is I, it's mad if you think about it and, and i it, you know in not too long from now like you i mean right now you can pay from the phone it's just not as Commonly in China, used, it's but... so big. Oh, is it? Yeah, in I China, it's constant. So we know WeChat, the oh, WeChat, app. Yeah. So it's like a WhatsApp uh, they use in China. Um, and your credit cards are on there. And in every store, you can just pay. You can just, you know, like, boop, 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 boop. But it's like, I'll tell this to people in Berlin, yeah, though. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, in in they, they home, can cards. I pay with card? No. Whoa, 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 what? And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I have to carry cash for the first time in my life. I, I hate carrying cash. Uh, I, I think it's fine to carry like a bit of cash, but that they can't expect you to. I had like this delivery the other day and it's like, it was a lot of money. Oh it's like, God. and you're going to pay in cash? And I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 what? Uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. So 
for people watching, I'm pretty sure. And by the way, it's not even that cold. I mean, that hot outside, but here is kind of. It's it, warm inside. Yeah. yeah, it's because of the energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the energy. High anyway, energy. are we getting off track, or what is a? Uh... Uh, we typically have some stuff written, yeah. but I'll be honest with you, I, this is just to give anybody the impression that that we work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've gotten a tour. You guys definitely work. <laughs> we do work, but we like yeah. to go off, off track all the time. Um, so how do you see yourself going in, forward? So oh. do you see yourself as somebody, you know, that is meant to be uh, in an entertainment industry? Uh, do you still want to stick into gaming? Do you still want to stick as a host? Like, there, how do you see, you know, all the ramifications that could happen in your life? It's quite forward? interesting because I, I think about, I've been starting to think about that a lot. Uh, recently i'm also getting a bit older and i'm not um uh you know all of my friends are married and have children for instance and i'm not i never really was that attracted to the idea of i need to buy a house and get married and get children and i'm i don't have that stress which i think is a positive thing and probably for me because of my career and it's probably also because of my career uh, because I've just been traveling and working so hard and I love it. You know, I love that drive. And I'm not saying you can't do both. You can do both, but it's just not for me now. So then I started thinking about, okay, then what it, it's, do it's, I, do? I, it's so funny to see you speak because you have to work on eggshells. Yes. You know, you have to work. Oh, but you're a woman, so you want children. And don't I, know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> the best form of feminism is just doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, in essence, that whatever, is also what it is, right? Being able to you do, do what you want to do. Just don't try to <laughs> explain yourself. I know, I've, I've learned. It's it's so sad. Oh my God. I'm careful. Anyway, uh, so now I'm just like, yeah, I've been doing this for seven years now. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, you know, I was bored of playing League. So bored. I think like two years ago, because I was watching it 365 days a week. I was doing every event. I was just like, oh, I played a lot of other games. I still do. Um, and yeah, I I've also started thinking about that now. Is this what I want to do forever? And in a way, yes. Like if um, wherever the paths take me, I think that in the next five years, I will definitely still be very involved with the League of Legends and the EU LCS. I feel like intertwined with the EU LCS, you know, because it's in, your heart. It's it's in, my, me, it's in my heart and, and maybe less emotional. It's just also where our careers grew up and we have so much, we invested so much. So I would still want to work in that, but I'm also starting to think of, like, hey, do I want to do some different things? Because uh, as being an on-camera personality, I am a woman and we can't beat around the bush being on camera. It does get more difficult and you get a lot more, la you know, backlash after a while if you get older and they're like, would younger people do it and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's based on your face basically, right? Which I obviously don't agree with, but I still, I want to make plans. You know, I want to see if there's anything else I can do. And I don't know. I do want to explore things in the future. Um, I love football, you know, the soccer, I, I love it. And so sometimes I think, you know what, with the experience I have now, maybe I can apply and maybe I can cover this in the future. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll so around see. entertainment, that's how... I think so. I think around entertainment, I, if I think of like a 10 year plan, I want to be, I, my brand, I've, I've put a lot into building it. And I think I do want to monetize on that at, at a certain point in time, you know? Uh, and in 10 years, I want to have made, I want to have made maybe an own company and have made a name for myself so that if I want to step out of the entertainment business, I can. You know, maybe I want to run a company that helps young women and, and men to do what I did 10 years ago. It sounds so ancient, but maybe I want to do that. Um, but I am starting to think about that. Yeah, for sure. That's so nice. Yeah. You mentioned a key word, which is brand, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it feels to me that everything is brand. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of, I had this this morning, um, I, I have very good friends in my in my gym and all of them like personal coaches or whatever, right? And everybody is once saying, right? I want to have building my company and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And what do I need? Do I need a doctor? That's like, you don't need a doctor. No. Like the, the, you have these big YouTubers that may not know anything about actually fitness or they may just do bro science all yeah. the time <laughs> and, and, and still have millions of views. And why is that? Because marketing, mm -hmm. marketing is everything. Yeah. And, um, you mentioned the word marketing or brand, sorry, yeah. or marketing your brand, mm. uh, which leads to my question, which is how did you market yourself and would you have done anything differently? Mm. Um, how did I market myself? I think from the beginning, someone linked me a tweet the other day that had two favorites and I was like, 
that was reality, you know, and from a very, from the start, I would be very conscious of, you know, okay, I'll stream and I'll put that on Twitter and we go on YouTube and I'm with SK and like everyone's tag is in there. And that was also very important. And I also start sharing a lot from the very start. I was posting selfies and people, I remember Trevor always used to like, and now I post selfies all the time, by the way, Trevor used to laugh at me for like posting selfies. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, it's, and it's fine because people like attach to you. And I always made sure that I was very much in contact with the viewers, even if the viewer base got bigger and bigger and if they got a bit more mean and a bit more volatile at times. And I always shared a lot. Um, and I think that is, I don't know if I would change it, but I sometimes think about that because I am quite an emotional person and I share a lot on social media. But people have to realize that I share as much as I want to share. And to you, it might look like that is all of her life. But I have a line, a very conscious line of things that I will never talk about and things that I will never share, people that I will never show, topics that I do not want to talk about. But people sometimes take the fact that I share a lot as an invitation to kind of break into that, you know, to I've had incidents with stalkers and that and with oh, people, no. all that stuff. And that's scary. So sometimes I think, okay, should I have shared less? But on the other hand, I think one of the reasons why I can, I have the numbers that I have now and I have the interaction that I have now is because I was always very real with the things I said. Um, if I could have done anything else differently, I don't know. I sometimes think I don't stand up enough for things that I could make a positive influence in. Um, I, I, I find this also a, a challenge myself. Yeah. Because on one hand, you don't want to alienate anybody that follows you mm -hmm. because some topics are very polarizing. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to name mm -hmm. the obvious ones, mm -hmm. but many topics are very polarizing. And you would like to have an opinion because you think it could add value and to you the have conversation. An opinion, right? Yeah, everybody has Personally, an opinion. Personally, everybody do. has an opinion. Yeah. Even if your opinion is that you don't care, but everybody has an opinion, yeah. right? And um, and and you you think that your opinion in some cases will add value to the conversation, yeah. but you can't share it unless it fits your brand. Yeah. Right. It's very difficult. It's, it's really difficult. It's really it's, hard. It's very conflicting for me personally. Yeah. It's very hard. Uh, um, I mean, we all know the recent examples of, of, of uh, everything happening at Riot and stuff and stuff like that. And also just there's always things. And I think as a woman at the forefront of esports, I'm always also expected to be, you know, a role model and all that. And um, and I honestly sometimes think I should speak out more, but I just, it's like, there's so much out there. There's so many opinions. There's so many people. There's people you can alienate. There's people who will love you more for it. There's people that are just going to wish death upon you. There's all that. And sometimes when something bad You're too exposed. happens, yeah, or, or something that you want to deal with or talk about, you, I have to like step back and try and think to myself, you know, okay, Jesus, like, how do I think about it? What, what could I do? Like, what positive change can I make in my life? But it takes a lot of courage to do that publicly as well. And I admit that that sometimes I'm scared. You know, I'm sometimes scared, but sometimes I'm like I know my mental health will suffer if I speak out on some things and I go into these. You know how it goes. You go into conversations with people. Oh, my God. And you keep going. And into, also in and Twitter mentions. And like it's stressful. So hard. And it's very hard. And, you know, I wish and I'm going to work on that in the future because I do think that I I think I'm still in the things that are most important to me, which are you know, inclusivity and being a good role model in general, whatever gender you may be. Um, and, and, but very much for, for women in gaming as well, that have to deal with so much shit and stuff. I hope I can be a good role model by doing what I do. Um, but in the future, I would definitely like to do more outward, but it's, I, I'm growing up, you know, I'm learning, I'm mentally and dealing with don't realize, like You're also trying to figure it out yourself like, yeah. as you go by, yeah. you know? And the person you were a year ago is not the person you are today. No. And, and that's that's what people need to understand, that's you know, and chill about. Mm -hmm. I saw a few, a few, you know, this, this, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy got stopped, actually. I mean, not stopped if uh, it's like a, I don't know. The, the, oh, because of wait. the they scandal. Yeah, the, the scandal of this guy, which the is like the Batista guy. Yeah. Right? Isn't the Batista guy? I don't, no, no, no. Um, I don't know if that's his name. Is yeah, a director? The, or a writer or something who had like really bad, yeah, really ha awful tweets like awful from tweets years ago. From, from years ago, that's mm -hmm. the point. That and, and the point I was going to make is, is not whether that's bad or right or whatever, which is not my play. I mean, I think I have whatever, it's obvious, right? But um, my, my point being, what you do on the internet stays on the internet forever. forever. It's not like if you make an interview on TV on the 70s, on the 70s or 80s, like nobody had any recorded or anything. Yeah. Like you're just, you know, it's not gonna stay. You just, whatever you say is gonna be, you know, scary. never used it's against scary. you. 
and it's different it's, it's, right now anything you say or do stays there forever people will make screenshots about it and will hunt you forever do you think do you think people have gotten more yeah. like offended and of like course. open or, or is it just because no, 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 no. more people are doing it now like and we're I, exposed to more I, people I, I think you know the world is moving in my eyes the world is moving towards more entertainment uh, entertainment is becoming more relevant as yeah. time goes by people have more free time to entertain themselves as you know in comparison with 70 years and ago. everyone has a phone everyone has a phone you entertain yourself you have a lot of off time with your phone that are you on twitter that's called entertainment and then you your home and you entertain yourself on average we have many more hours than before and evidence says that as you know machines take over there will be an on average an increased amount of time for entertainment as moving yeah. forward. And I think that the more free time you have, the more you find things to complain about. That to be annoyed about. Exactly. And, and like, especially in the, I guess, Western world or whatever. Wherever, yes, exactly. right? If everything's going well, you're bored. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. You, yeah. you have to find something. Like, you know, the person that has a normal job and a normal life will complain that they lost the train ticket today. Yeah. Uh, and we'll complain, we'll, we'll make his day miserable because he lost a train ticket. And the person that is a billionaire will complain because of whatever reason, right? Because I, I her friend say, is not talking to her. I want to make like, an, uh, I think, and you will agree with me, very important, like nuance. It's like, I, on one thing, I think it's, if you look at everything, it's good. Because I think a lot of more things are now getting called out that didn't get called out in the mm -hmm. past. You know, that's evolution and that's a good evolution. You know, like things that were allowed to be on TV in the 50s, you would now be like, oh my God, Agreed. you know, um, and blatant racism and everything yep. that is that is changing, but it's still all such a huge problem. And a lot more of these things are now, people are getting called out on their bullshit. And I think that generally is a good thing, right? Because we should move towards a world that is more open and more inclusive for everyone. But, you know, I still think that, 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 that you know, there's still... A lot of people that I think, why in the hell are you annoyed at that? And why are you, why are you telling me that? You know, or why are you telling, why are you making this person's life miserable who's done nothing wrong? Yeah. Why, you know, like, and in the same vein, and then like, you could be focusing on important issues as well. Um, you, you know, what's the adjective that I, I, it's so genius, you know, actually Joe Rogan, you know him? Yeah. You know, yeah he has a podcast. Mm -hmm. All of you, I recommend that you you watch it or listen to it. It's a Joe Rogan podcast. He's, he, he's very polarizing, but, yeah. but he's good with these one-liners. Mm -hmm. And he said, people nowadays want to be recreationally outraged. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what they you know they're just recreationally outraged yeah like doesn't matter what happens there will be something to complain <gasps> about instead of like no focus on the positive no 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 positives focus on the negatives and they just get recreationally outraged that's yeah. just that's gonna be that's your day true. spend four hours shitting on this guy on twitter and it has made it more difficult to navigate like life i think of, for, for people who are online and i know there's things like for instance you know picks to watch various always mm -hmm. dresses up as something and before and i also think it's important that we care more about how because like you don't want to represent someone badly but like he's like okay i'll wear a baguette i'll get a baguette and a beret for it because we're going to paris oh, no. and we were like i can imagine already yeah and we were and, but it was fine but still we were like <gasps> okay uh you know will french people be annoyed or whatever but they liked it in the end they loved it and that's fine and then sometimes i do think that we're being over i definitely noticed that in my own life i'm like overly cautious i'm like i think okay i want to tweet this and i'm like i'm not gonna tweet it because somebody will take it wrong yeah right? somebody will, and that that's that sucks if i i wish that would go away I wish it would go away because um, that's one of the reasons why I try not to have a phone for two hours. Because if I do, if I read one of those tweets <laughs> one minute before I go to bed, and you know I have trouble sleeping, so um, let's not. But it, it's kind of, it sucks, right? It's, it kind of sucks. But in the end, I hope like we're moving towards a better world. But some people take a freaking chill pill. Like, Think about what you're writing and who you're writing it to and what, what you're trying to achieve. I don't and know, I, I just take pleasure in this in these mentions. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I think I got past the point. I get it's yeah. like I'm I'm past that point. Now it's like almost shadow in which yeah, yeah. I need to read. Like I just feel this <laughs> this thing yeah, yeah. feeling nice. Thing, it's a, oh. <laughs> it's a, or it's like, oh uh, I remember it's like, oh my god, you, you posted a picture in a short skirt. I cannot oh, come on, take you so. serious anymore. And it's like 
that is your problem and not mine, buddy. Like that is anyway. Yeah, what, we're talking what, for a long time. I don't know what our know, uh, how, curfew, how uh, long have we gone? Production, how long are we here for? You've been here for an hour. We've been here for an hour? Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. We, you speak about so much stuff that time yeah. doesn't fly. Yeah. Doesn't fly. You know, the, the thing happens, like, what happens to me is that the more stuff happens in my life, the, the, it seems like one year is like 10 years. It yeah. feels like 10, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I, I've gotten uh, times in my life where I was doing the same thing over and over. And when, as a player, that happens mm -hmm. a lot because you just zone out. Mm -hmm. You're a player and all of a sudden you realize, shit, a whole year passed. Yeah. But now that I, so many different things are happening in my life, it's like, can time pass already? Really? Yeah, yeah. I, think for, I, I don't know why that is. but Oh, is it not? Because my time is definitely going still very fast. I can imagine if you have a child and everything, just every day you're probably, oh my God, he's growing up, he's growing up, he's growing up, he's growing yeah, up. And also the, this kid grows up pretty quickly. Pretty as well, quickly. It? So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Your favorite movie oh my favorite movie that's difficult i watch more shows um I, I'll, I'll tell you something when every time i ask a favorite movie from people like rarely people say the same movie yeah and then i have a lot of great additions to my list of to do well like, i'll, I'll my, tell you to I, watch well i watch more tv shows like and, and i also but i ask for a movie Abby. No, like can't. you can't just all right the godfather trilogy i don't know like I've, <laughs> i watched it like five six times but i'm sure you've seen it uh, it's very hard i, I also because i think about this often my favorite movie does change very often i used okay. to love like probably a rom romantic comedy used to be my favorite movie oh and my then god whatever uh, there's there's so much do you sometimes get frustrated at how much stuff there is like there's like okay you know like a lot of like Vettius is obsessed with anime and they're always like oh you should watch anime so now I'm watching a bit of anime and then I'm like but all these good tv shows just came out and there's these books I haven't written and I love no, old music I haven't listened to this music that came out and like old music and I do think people should have a bit more and I sound like an old person but there's so much good stuff in the past that, like music for instance you sound like an old person yeah but it, like it's great <laughs> and it, it inspires a lot of what happened today can we stop can we talk about how shows, do I seem shows, young best show best show best best shows. Shows. sorry oh, yeah. I, uh, it, was, it, was, it was getting heated for a moment yeah uh, The Wire oh everybody's talk, it's talking about that one it's great everybody's talking about that uh, one it's, the it's hard to get into I think it's kind of a hard recommendation because it's like it's a bit older, so the quality isn't as up to point, and it's a Baltimore accent uh, okay. show, but it's great. Over, like, as a whole package of six seasons, it's insane. The Sopranos, absolutely mm -hmm. great. I just watched Parks and Recreation, which I've never watched. It's Parks hilarious. Parks and Recreation? What is that? Uh, it's like 20 minute episodes, and it's like The Office style. Oh. Um, and it's great. Who, who was this guy that wrote The Office? Was it the. How, oh, what, the UK, what, what, or, like Ricky Gervais or whatever. Or, the, no, the, no, 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 that's uh, yeah, 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 that guy, that guy, yeah. that guy is hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. I, was, I was watching a video the other day about him on, yeah. on YouTube. That guy is hilarious. I didn't know him. Yeah, he's great. He also does extras, for instance, uh, like about being extras on a show on a, like a, a movie. He's really funny. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah, it's great. And I, I, I saw the other day, uh, I don't know, but it was in the in the US a few days ago, and uh, during one of these nights, I was just on YouTube, and my favorite comic was Kevin Hart, actually. Yeah. Which is funny. it's like hilarious. I can just I can't stop laughing, and there was like one of these highlights from the top comedians or whatever. And I saw one guy that was killing it, and I was like, "Who's this guy?" It's like a bald guy, and uh, his name was Bill Burr. Bill Burr, yeah. You see, he's uh, heard... the most hilarious, hilarious person on earth. I think um, Trevor or Quickshot and them are, are really into some of these comedians. It's, it's I recommend to anybody here. Okay. It's, it's called Bill Burr with two R's yeah. at the end. He's the most hilarious person on earth okay like it's just it's unbelievable I'll the watch guy tonight the guy is unbelievable i really love it is there any any other games uh aside league of legends that you love playing uh nowadays um i played overwatch a ton when it came out i actually think that's a that's such a good game but i i, I did it get does wear out a bit yeah it wore me out a bit because i would play so much as well and it, it wore me out because it was literally always the same and it was also kind of my fault because i only played three champions or whatever three champions three heroes um so i say champions as well yeah, even when champions. i was i was never a dota. i mean i played for like a couple months dota but yeah it's just champions is also great i don't know it would describe I mean, sorry, sorry, well. heroes, heroes, sorry. Yeah, heroes, heroes is also great. It's a, it's a great word, I was about to say. I yeah. use heroes yeah. a lot. And yeah. it's, it's not necessarily because I play Dota, it's because, I don't know, it's no, just heroes. No, it sounds nice. also inspirational. Heroes, um, heroes. Uh, I also played a lot of Fortnite uh, this year. I had it for so long and it was like the hype was building and I was like, oh, you know, do I want to try it or no? But um, 
Oh, we, we have fun questions as oh, well. Oh, cool. So, no, please, please go ahead. You I play saying. a lot of things. Uh, I think it's important to... I mean, Riot also... And this is like a common misconception. People are always like, are you allowed to tweet about other... Yes, guys. Yes. Uh, it's, it's so and crazy. Riot, I mean, Riot embraces that. Yeah. Like, you go to Riot headquarters... Like you guys have like fighting games and like yeah we get a also it's like we get an allowance to for like to buy games every year to try new games that's so uh, nice as well so yeah I definitely wait I so you, you have an allowance well. to buy games yeah we have an allowance like the best I company in the world I don't I mean we can't say that right now but um what uh, Why am I, working here? <laughs> I mean that's Come a on, good man. thing you don't even need to buy them you have them here yeah. God damn it. Uh, those are perks, definitely. But uh, yeah, I don't think, you know, best company in the world, We it's not something we're going to say for a while now. Uh, yeah, but uh, from my I, experience... Yeah. I didn't want to uh, open the Pandora's box. That's but okay. Very, very, very fast thoughts on, yeah. on the latest... Uh... Um, well, I, I was really shocked. I, I have to be honest. I was super shocked because... Um, and this is always difficult. And this is about speaking out about things and how it's hard. Because I've always had a really positive experience in in the Berlin office, right? So I only have my own kind of field to look at, but I definitely always had also bad experiences in the gaming industry in general um, as being a woman. So I was really disappointed and super shocked at everything that came out. And I not for one second didn't believe anyone because even if the story, yes, stories are always colored and are always from a certain perspective, but there was just, it was too much. And it was so clear that a lot of these accounts all of these accounts uh, were completely true. And the thing is tricky because I think, you know, it's also a wake up call for Riot and a lot is happening inside the company. There's, you know, a lot of initiative, a lot of talks and really things that, and it's not going to be easy. And we're not, nothing is going to get fixed overnight. And I think this is where it's difficult because, you know, I guess the community also is angry and rightfully angry and wants kind of updates, you know, and like what's going on. But these kind of things they take time and um you know i would say something in red's favor which is that when you are a truly customer first company then we are you're held accountable to the highest possible standards yeah. you see other companies that exist that have gone and go through similar challenges yeah that don't have the need mm -hmm. or don't feel the need to address it yeah to the fans or the yeah. community, and, and, right that, and that is and that is because they just don't feel like you know they they are entitled to it. Uh, but one thing going for Riot is that they they are willing to sacrifice um, a corporate value, uh, in other words, like the value of their company. They're willing to sacrifice you know revenue. They're willing to sacrifice everything to right the wrongs. Yeah, and that's uh, an uh, an attribute. That you actually don't see often no. at that level of company. Like we, we're talking about a company that makes two billion, right? Yeah. Uh, just from a single game, like a, a year. People don't. Uh, people need to also look at the positives. I think so. But, so tough, but it, to react I, like that. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're exactly right because if you're always so open, then it's it's really hard. But I still think like this ultimately has to bring positive change. How shitty things are now, and like. You know, it's a lot to deal with for everyone, you know, because you start also second guessing, okay, shit, you know, have I even things like maybe you hug people that do not like that, you know, because we're like very friendly environment also at the office. Maybe you just have to reevaluate everything. Like, it, am I really doing the right thing? Am I taking everyone into account? And then the, ooh, and the more important big stuff of like, you know, like people, obviously everyone should get paid and treated equally and should always feel good when they're coming into work and never feel bad and all that. Um, it's uh, I'm in the end, we should be glad, even though it's horrible that things came out because something has to change. Right. And uh, the thing is, it's going to be a long process. And uh, yeah, I hope the community can understand that you can't just say ev everything, every meeting there's held, every like every change there's coming and everything that's looked at uh, and hope. And I hope as well, because I don't know. I hope yeah, the, that the things are going to change anything. for the best. Like, we just don't know anything. We yeah. can just. And I, I, I don't even, I never judged on this and I will never judge on this. So I, I literally don't even, in, in this specific case, I, I have an opinion, but I will never share it. Yeah. Uh, it, my, my point is in, in regards to the positives of this, I made it very clear, definitely, that it's so tough. Yeah. From their position to do what it is. Yeah. But it, and, 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 and like TLDR, it, it should be tough. You know, you sh we should be ashamed of ourselves, basically, right? So, uh, yeah, I hope that in a couple of years, we can look back and, and see that an actual change was made and, and for the better of the whole industry.
Is there anything that you see actually before we go to the fun questions? Because I love fun questions. I really, I truly do. I love you, fans. I really love you. But I, this follow up question is important. Uh, is there anything that you see obviously that you would like to, you know, snap and change? Uh, mm -hmm. From either your position or something in Berlin, something in Riot Games. Oh, if, I, if I could change it, you know, I mean, there's very hopeful things. Like if I could change it, I, I would make that in everything, women are considered equal as men, you know, and, and er, er, you know, and if, if you choose to be someone else, if you feel like you're someone else, that you're accepted immediately for that and that you, all, and th that's like the biggest dream. That's like asking for world peace at a, at a, you know, Miss World contest. I know it's it's fucked, but you know, uh, and just that everyone could be aware of the influence they have on other people's lives, and to look within themselves and think all these things that I've been doing all my life or in the last couple of years. Am I really right? You know, am I really taking other people into consideration? Am I really being open minded? Am I really being inclusive? Am I really all of these things? I think we should all search into ourselves a, a lot more, and especially now at Riot. Very good. Yeah. So, Mr. Mario Tomassoni, at Mario Tomassoni, why there hasn't ever, no, why there hasn't been even one woman pro player in the LCS, and will we oh, ever see one? I saw the question. I saw the question. Yeah, uh, I saw it too. I yeah. click five. I mean, Romilia, we all remember uh, Romilia, of course, and I believe there was also on a Chinese team. Um, and there's also Colin and stuff. So there's definitely been presences, but not like, I guess you want someone that's like becomes a mainstay, you know, like a perks, but it's a, it's a woman or it's a girl, right? That's that's something you would aspire to. And I think it's a very layered one because I don't, I don't know. I think first off, there are a lot of factors to consider that do not have to do with the fact that um, girls aren't good enough because they definitely are. But we're also looking at an environment, you own a team in which they're now, the way things are now, you know, five guys, six guys from 17 to 24 year old. And it would take a lot and a lot of investment, which I think teams should look into because you need to deal with that new psychology of then the woman stepping in. And I think that's just normal, right? It's, it changes the dynamic. Um, and it's not about, and I, it's such a hard one because I, I don't, I don't know, you know, in the end of the day, because there are plenty of very good girls, uh, girls are very good at any game that do very well. Um, but it takes a bit to get through to that top level. And I think it's more social factors than anything else. Yeah, yeah. this is one of the topics that we, you gotta work on eggshells as well on. Yeah, uh, I am walking on eggshells. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and so am I for making, uh, formulating a question. Yeah. Do you believe um, that, first of all, do you believe that there is a world in which uh, the attributes required to be a professional player are more often present in men than woman? No. And if that would theoretically be the case, for whatever reason, do would you then consider it a bad thing that then women are less present? Huh. Um, I also think we don't know, right? In a theoretical world, we know that, or in an actual world, we know that um, tennis, for instance, there's mixed, up, there's mixed doubles, but you have the female top of the competition and the male top of the competition going from the idea that there are just different strengths and different, you know, the way the body works and athletes that men are built and that women are built mm -hmm. in essence, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess if you could say that, then this is a case that's something to be looked at. But to me, nothing says that, um, you know, a woman couldn't be as good as video games as, yep. and I think a lot of the qualities in terms of responsibility and whatnot and competitiveness and drivenness, of course, w women have that as well. Definitely so. Uh, so yeah. Very good. So Illusion HS, what were some of the biggest difficulties in the start as a host, especially considering the job is live on set and every mistake is visible? Good luck in the future. You're doing an amazing job. Ah, oh, thank you That's so much. That's so cute. That's very nice. Uh, well, all he plays Hearthstone. That... Who he does? He knows Lothar. Illusion right? HS. I am assuming that. Oh Harston. yeah, okay HS. Yeah. Or his last name is Has Han Solo. Uh, uh, Han Solo. <laughs> oh my God. That's... <laughs> Highlight right there. <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, well, yeah, just that, right? A live environment. But I think since I always, or the most of my career, have been live, this is what I love, and I actually. I, there was this blooper video most recently of when I now I'm in front of camera and I have takes, I fuck up because I, I want that feeling of being live. But yeah, it's been 
pretty hard knowing that everything's live and that you are on the internet. So everyone always remembers everything you did wrong and will spam it to you in a GIF every single time you show your face. Um, one of the worst things ever was my first international event was All Stars 2013 in Shanghai. And like in the beginning, they did like, this are the casters, these are, this is the stage. And it came to me and I didn't know where the camera was. So three times I started over and I was like, hello, thank you, welcome. Hello, thank you, welcome. <laughs> I'm Ify the Porter. And then JP, the producer, went in my ear, whatever you do, do not start again. And I was like, and it was like, ah. <laughs> Uh, but I think I learned that if you take yourself... That's the ugly side of that people don't see. Yeah. At, at what you said before, I learned that if you take... If you can laugh at yourself, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And also, when you laugh at yourself, people feel that, actually. Like, mm. feel they feel like, well, you know, the, the, max, the, the ultimate form of confidence is to literally not care yeah. about these things. Like, mm. you show... When you show that... I mean, people make jokes to me in the office all the time. I love it. I love it. Like yeah. they, they, I, they see, I, I see no harm in that. And no. that shows such a, you know, the confidence, the confidence leadership, everything, right? Yeah. And and you can portray that and you do portray that um, mm. as a host, actually. Mm. So congratulations. Thank you. Hair opinion. Okay. Uh, Do you just select some? Because there's a lot of... I'm sorry. I'm getting yeah, a bit no, hungry. I'm, I'm even going uh, <laughs> numerically shocks. <laughs> And they just they just gave me uh, questions. I don't know how you chose them. Uh, what what are the wait? Can I choose one? Can oh I... yeah, please. What 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 are what are the um what what makes you choose a specific question? What what are you looking for, production? Our social media manager. Uh, listen, when I ask a question, oh, you give me an answer. You this don't, is you don't, a spicy one. There's you don't drive me one. to your colleague, okay? Um, well, I mean, there are a lot of questions about uh, the caster things for Worlds, you know, at day oh, 10, how yeah, do you feel about being Korea for Worlds? That I got to reopen. Well, the other EU guys and Ani and out with her and all of that. Um, yeah, I can't say too much about it, uh, to be honest. Um, I, I First up, I don't know what it's going to be like because I haven't done it. So I, I get a bit annoyed at people like, what's it going to be like? You have no idea? I don't know. I can imagine I'll, it'll probably be a bit lonely if I'm alone in Korea and the rest is there. But as terms of production, like, I don't know. I can see very much different sides. Like the NA, the analyst desk was in LA in the past as well. Mm -hmm. And I actually think a lot of uh, broadcasts, you know, football broadcasts and stuff for war, for the World Cup and all that, they have, they have their own studio for analysis, right? In their home countries. And they send commentators and reporters, which I think is the ideal thing. So personally, I'm like, okay, I'm not exactly sure about not sending commentators, but we have to see. Um, I don't love it, but we'll see. But in terms of like having the analyst desk, you know, you you have an amazing studio that has been invested in heavily where you can do everything you want to do and provide the best content because you have the telestrator, you have the graphics, you have everything. Like what if you look from a broadcast perspective, using that studio is going to give you the best result. But what are you going to have to give up in terms of not being at the venue and how what will that feel like uh probably i mean dash can probably compare because he's had times that he's been in la doing the show and then only came for the finals but we'll have to see and i can't say too much about it. i mean i just don't like that people like make all these comparisons and sit like that. They, they're comparing it to productions who don't even have own studios you know then of course you have party. to yeah then of course you have to build it and the venue and stuff like that. And I'm not saying it's going to be great. And I can completely understand the community sentiment because they live it through the casters, you know, they live. If you can't be there, you want to feel that it, that all that energy. And yeah. that, that's why I don't know. It's important because you we feed it off to the fans as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So. But I, I mean, I hope like it's just it's it's the way it is. Right. So let's let's see. Let's see. Really. Right. It wouldn't I'll be the first you, time. I'll tell you. It wouldn't be the first time also Riot uh, re strategizes yeah uh, because the community spoke i mean yeah exactly so, so we'll, we'll see. see we'll, we'll see. see i don't want to talk out of i want to walk and on eggshells there you go <laughs> acceleration says since english isn't your first language do you have and by the way this but this this question is really good i'm pretty sure many people has this question because your english is perfect so since english isn't your first language do you have some tips on how to practice good pronunciation etc huh. Well, I can tell you how I learned English. It is through watching television. Yeah, that was what and that is a great, I think that's a great way to practice. If you can't practice with someone in person, watch television. I mean, and everyone does this, which is so great. Shows, um, games, 
books, anything, but I think especially games and shows and movies because they're subtitled, right? Yeah. So you, and when you're younger, your brain has a really easy time learning new things and impulses. So the only reason why I'm so good at English is because I would watch two hours of television, American television every night, The Simpsons and Friends, and my brain would just absorb it. And that's how I learned it. And uh, I think that's the best way if you can't- You speak order... a lot of languages actually. Yeah. How yeah. many do you speak? Uh, so I speak four, so English, Flemish or Dutch, French, uh, German, and I understand a lot of Spanish. Oh, so, oh it's, it's true. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, well, I've always loved it and I like doing it. And a lot of, it's not perfect. Like I would say my German is fluent, but if you have a grammar coach, he'll say that I'm making a lot of mistakes, but it, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking it and that's what's most important to me. Okay. How do you react when we didn't qualify for uh, Spain? <sighs> Uh, I know you can't the you can't no, take no. a side, but no, you can't take a side. But in general, like, and there's a lot of things that I very distinctly remember, right? I and I say even more than you not qualifying for Spain because I expected it a little bit. I yes, don't want to lie. I don't want to lie. I think I uh, this is a I'm proof sorry, that I, I did the same. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lie. Uh, like I, I had a feeling when I looked at the way Misfits had won all their games and how the meta shifted, and honestly. Just how you guys played in the last couple of weeks, I had a feeling, but nobody knew, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you guys just completely, and that surprised me. The fact that it was a 3 0 and that it was that ugly, that surprised me because yep. it looked like a complete fall down of like, the team. You, you know, we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened, but I, I think uh, I think there's a good chance that it was just overtraining, actually. Mm hmm. Like they're, you know, they really wanted to make it work, and all of them played a lot, a lot, a lot. And when you play so much that you tunnel vision, you become a robot, you, yeah. you lose creativity and all of a sudden you can't get W's and then you lose how to, I mean, you, you, you forget how to win. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's exactly what happened and it happened in a really short amount of time. And you had, it was bad timing. It was and it has time. happened to Fnatic before, yeah. has happened to Origin before, mm -hmm. has happened to a ton of teams before and common denominator, those teams were successful before. And then they had one or two weeks where they imploded and you just- And they can't get back. It's, it's the hardest it's thing to do, I think, in competition is being good, being the best, and then that that period of doubt, you know, because you you don't know, like nothing works. It's not like they don't train, like they play so much. Yeah, of they course. play I, so I, much. Carlos, I don't think anyone's thinking that they didn't train. I think if I, anything, I wanna I wanna make sure the vacation just meme make doesn't sure get the thrown around. The meme is dead. Even though we were in summer, you yeah. know. This but, should have never happened in the spring. But you say yeah, not yeah. good enough weather. <laughs> 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 But yeah, you say that about like, I can't, obviously I can't, I do not play favorites in ULCS or whatever, never, but I think everyone can understand. Yeah. Well, if you go to Worlds or MSI, I'm going to cry if a team gets, if if a European team gets knocked out, you know, oh God, you know, you know, a woman crying. Ha ha. No, yes, I will. You know, <laughs> um, you know when Fnatic did the crazy run at Worlds, uh, when G2 went to the final of that MSI, was like that is amazing and that oh i feel so good and i also feel that for other teams um at times like when clg made it to the final but i feel it gauntlet. For let's you. see gauntlet we yeah have, we oh gauntlet chance. you know what i'm thinking about something here yeah about playing with this in the gauntlet just to give spain kind of at least a shout out a, a small shout out like yeah. hey thank you i, I can't we, get any we worse fucked up. <laughs> we fucked up but we're playing the gauntlet <laughs> With the Spanish jersey, I have to I've think about that. I've heard said it. He said a player like me has to be at Worlds, and I agree. A player like him has to be at Worlds, but hundred percent. We'll see. Um, it's it's tough. It's like, it's like Kobe Bryant, or Le I mean, when he was playing, or LeBron James making yeah, finals. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. What what rank are you in League of Legends? Uh, I've not played ranked in no way. Yeah, in over two years. So that means do you still rage? Because I only get to rage in ranked. Uh, it, that is why I do not play ranked. So oh. I had a period of time where I was very, very, like I played ranked a lot and it stressed me out a lot. I got to platinum four or something. Oh, that's not yeah, bad. Uh, playing support and mid. And um, I was like on a roll, but I was really into it, but I was not liking the person I turned into because I was working very hard on LCS and it stressed me out so much that I, take, I took a conscious decision after that to be like, okay, you know what? 
I'm not gonna play it anymore, ranked anymore. And I hope people are fine with that. And also sometimes I play less and I hope people can understand that because, you know, famously Monte Cristo didn't play, but yeah, was one of the, is one of the best analysts we ever had in League of Legends, so right? Um, and I'm not saying I'm a Monte Cristo, not at all. I'm that level of knowledge, but I do think that I have a lot of different things to focus on on a host, on like backstories, team dynamic, you know, um, evolving in in the way I ask questions and getting the best out of people, setting up a structure, preparing a segment, delivering the punchlines and the narratives, all that and the game knowledge. And I have to say that I I find it hard sometimes to be as in tune as like the Fischio and Vedius are. And I work on that every day, but it is work, <laughs> you know? It is I, work. I imagine. Yeah. So what is it, what is in your eyes, if you, you don't even have to think, yeah. what is the best moment in his for you? Yes, just one. No. Uh, damn. Ha! Huh. All right, one. I also I like it's so I'm difficult. Sorry. It's been seven years. I would say uh, Korea Worlds, just like Imagine Dragons and everything. Oh, my I know. I feel like everyone's favorite moments, but it's insane. Uh, it was e just peak there. It was crazy. Like it, then, people were like. Well, okay, this is oh, this happening. This is great. This is uh, happening. This was this was freaking great. And I mean, the quality of the final was not great. No. Um, I have a lot of recency bias. I think OG and Fnatic making it to the semifinal in Europe yeah. was insane. And I think, yeah, the fact that and I was watching this the score video yesterday about like combat or underdog victories. So many of those are European or like, well, how did they make it there? But I think two thousand. Um, 15 at OG and Fnatic because it was in Europe and it was in Belgium. Uh, oh, really? I yes. can't remember that. I didn't remember that. It was in Brussels. That oh. that must have been one of my favorite moments ever. I got to be on stage and my friends and family were there and it wasn't about me, but like it felt like it was about me a little bit. Me, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> uh, that was freaking awesome. And then, you know, esports wise, um, you know, worlds, a lot of worlds moments, uh, Samsung in. Uh, not in Staples Center, in New York, in uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, the five setter. Um, like, there's been a lot of really good series, I think, and I hope we're in for some good stuff at Worlds as well. I hope so too. I yeah. hope we need this. To as we well. need this also. Like, we need Worlds to be competitive and good. You know, kind yeah. of like as a community, I also think we really want that, even though. People are really down on everything now. I still like a lot is going into Worlds. Honestly, I, I feel awesome. like this is like. Listen to me, people. This is the turning point in which the Western world can actually beat, I, I'm calling it, the Western world can actually beat Asia. I mean... I'm, I'm really calling it. I feel like teams have gotten so good at the moment. Like Europe, you don't understand how good teams are in Europe right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The only thing I would put against that is that, like, I always, I think actually Europe has always done well, right? Very well. They need to do better though. And uh, But the argument is also like, it's team fight, it's what we love. It's early aggression in team fights, but there's one region that is insane at that, and that is China. China. And I also would not. I love that RNG one, you know, MSI and stuff. Like I, I, I love that, and I think that would also be awesome if that's able to happen. But on the other hand, I think it, I think it's more awesome that China doesn't win and I mean, I, yes, Europe wins. Europe by the way. winning would be like. Okay, let me ask you this question, which I've asked many, many people, and actually it doesn't work for you because Spain won the World Cup a lot. Imagine you had when never. You mean won, a lot? You mean one time? Uh, well, and then the Euro Cup. I mean, you've won a lot oh, of okay. big things. So, if you in your lifetime you'd never seen Spain doing well, right? At something that you find really important, let's say football, right, or the World Cup. I don't know how that important one time, this is yeah, the, those, something. Those four years. Or like, or is there something that you find competitively more important? Like, is there another football team or like uh, something know, that you follow? I, 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 Formula One, uh, for me, like, like Alonso or something. Or something. Yeah. Like, it, imagine like the highest thing. Like for me, that would be Belgium winning the World Cup football, right, in my lifetime. And then like, you have to choose, or Belgium you, you or Spain wins the World Cup. Yeah, kind of close. Or a European team wins the World Championship. Oh, how do you choose? Honestly, as long as not for you, it's G two. As, as long as it's not Fnatic, <laughs> I, I can't make do. I can't. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I love this. Come on, would you? I love this love hate relationship with If them. you get knocked out, really love if it. in a world where you get knocked out and Fnatic plays the final, you're gonna cheer for Fnatic, right? What? <laughs> There's no way. There's like no way. <laughs> what? Do you think Fnatic will cheer for us if they get knocked out? No way. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch the games like, oh, yeah, the Reckless, oh, he's dead. And like, oh, I mean, I guess. Just you're... competition. Yeah, so. you're what, right. what do you expect? Yeah, the, I don't know, man. 
how naive, eh? That's very yeah, naive. Yeah, very naive. I mean, I love League of Legends, yeah. but but I love competition even more. Oh my god. I thought you I'm knew sorry. me. I'm sorry. I thought you knew me. I'm sorry. Do you pay attention to other esport titles? Yes, very much. Um, I love watching Counter Strike. I think Counter Strike is awesome. It's really awesome. I to watch. Um, don't like quiz me because I don't know too much. Although I do know a lot about like the history of the teams now. Also, my boyfriend works for. Uh, he covers Counter Strike. He makes oh, really? videos. He makes videos uh, for ESL. Nice. Um, anyway, uh, he'll hate that I just said that. Uh, so I get a lot of he's like, oh, watch this, watch this. But just natively, I love watching Counter Strike. Uh, I watch a lot of Overwatch League. Like I watch as much as Would I can. Would you watch the major happening in uh, London? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm very excited. Actually, did we post about the, the stickers are coming out today, right? Or came out today? Yeah. Stickers are out today, people. Buy the G2 Esports stickers because we are legends. You guys know that. Yeah. And uh, I'm crossing my fingers to uh, do very well in this major. Well, Just buy everything. It's a pretty Before cool you cut me off, uh, I was going to say that. I'm sorry, I had to do a sellout. <laughs> I had, I, I had to. I had to production. I think it's very important to just watch different things to see and recognize that people do things better and do things differently. And also just not esports, but like sports broadcasts and whatever. And what I've always loved about Counter-Strike is that they're like... And I say this I because I don't want to say like that it's unprofessional, but they're a bit like no fucks given, you know. They're going to say what they want to say the you way know? they want to say it. And it's great. <laughs> That's the thawing it's, Richard Lewis yeah, way. I mean, yeah. I would also say just like, you know, even Sponge and Henry G and all oh, of them. Yeah. Like, they just do... They just fucking do their thing and they do it well. And I think, you know, there is an argument to be made for like, okay, there's extremes. And I think a lot of people think that the ride broadcast is too extreme, like wanting to adhere to certain things. I mean, there's some criticism on Overwatch League that it all it's has to be very buttoned up. buttoned up and whatever. And I think there's different styles. And I definitely, I admire things I in all that. those styles, but I, I love Counter-Strike coverage. Please don't, don't, don't lose this goofy thing that you guys have going no, on in no, the no. US. I mean, yes, I really love it. No. Like, I, you know... I don't know if you guys have saw this, uh, have seen this, but just all of a sudden seeing Quickshot dressed like you know with makeup and all that thing as a, as a, somebody com that completely lost his mind, yeah. just doing this quick stats thing is the best thing. It was that crazy. I've seen. I mean, he's a good actor. Yeah, he's insane. He's a good actor. So uh, it was not, believable. So it was one of those things where uh, the backstory. So he's done quick. He loves quick stats, right? And we have no this, way. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you know that he <laughs> loves quick stats? We, we had him here, and he was talking about quick stats for like thirty minutes. Yeah, I loved it. None of them were interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, so I wasn't on the show. I remember because I was on PTO, and it was a case where his parents were in town, so he didn't have really that much time to prepare something. It was really a team effort, like. The stats people came with, these are the things you can talk about, and I have an idea of what you can do. And he was just like, yeah, let's do it. And I think this is what symbolizes how we have been this year. It's just like, we're all, you have a crazy idea. Yeah, you know. Go for it. And, and don't, I think our producers have told us many times, if you're going to try it, go. don't go half-half. You know, go for That's it. That's when people say cringe. Yeah. But if you go all in. This yeah. <laughs> and Or it can be cringe, and it, cringe is sometimes good. Or it, if you and, embrace oh, it, yeah. By the way, guys, all grow up. Half of the things you see are not cringe, but you guys still call it cringe. Um, Those YouTube comments or Twitch comments. Yeah. And it's like, but do it and put your heart in it. Like, because if it's going to fail, then or it's going to fail miserably and you're never going to do it again, or it's going to be great. And if you half ass it, nobody's going to remember. Oh my well, God. That was, that, was, no, that was the best closure. That's words from the queen. To live the, by. The portrait yeah. shocks. Yeah. I'll be honest. This is like when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger got told, "You gotta change the German accent you have. <laughs> you will never succeed in business, in movie business. You have to change that name L and last name that you My have, name. because nobody can, uh, you know, spell how, it." How, how and and he said, be? "I'm not gonna do that." And yeah. he still just kicked ass. Same. So <laughs> F -E the portrait. socks, the portrait is moving, <laughs> is moving the world forward in esports. We thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Last words for these people. Uh, first up, last words for you, uh, then G2, Carlos. This was amazing. This is great. You are actually a really gifted interviewer. Oh, no. Yeah, on. yeah. This is this is awesome. Because thank that's you so because much I for enjoy. having me. Yeah, this is so much like, yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. It was great. I think I got to speak a lot about a lot of things that people don't usually hear from me, which is great. And yeah, for you guys at home, have an open mind. You know, look at things from different perspectives and maybe you find it cringe, that's fine. But, you know, have an open mind at everything and look at it and then give a balanced opinion on the internet. <laughs> ha! But, Never gonna happen, but if I can do anything. And live your life to the fullest and enjoy because you only have one. That's 
fantastic. Thanks very much, Shox. And for all of you talking about cringe, here comes my cringe moment. You know, one very wise man said, uh, you become the king of uh, entertainment when you can manage the cringe and make it yours. I just made up that sentence. <laughs> I, I, I did it. I did it correctly. I made it up. Now it's my moment to shine. You guys want to be as muscular and handsome and uh, as great of an interviewer as I am? Then go ahead and g2esports.com slash shop. You can buy this beauty, perhaps not with my nickname, not yet, but if you wait a couple, actually, I don't think we'll do that until the end of the year. So buy this thing and then you can buy the next one next year. If you're from the US or if you're a fanboy like me. Pretty. Oh, say can you see? Cringe. I just watched that Fergie performance of that the other day. It was The awful. pink one, if you're feeling it, you know, I like to wear this sometimes around the street so that people can realize that I don't give a fuck. You can buy that, by the way. Can you buy this still? Or is this... You can't buy it. You can't buy this yet, right? But you will be able to buy this wow. at some point. Wow! It's the inverse version. That looks sick! It does, right? Oh my god, we, we, we need to get one. <laughs> That, 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 was, that, that, that was a real that was, that, was a, that was a real emotion right there yeah people i love you so much g2esports.com slash shop this was a great fantastic interview that's have you the portrait and we love her too have a great day